doesn't mean you don't. Sometimes you just got to be patient because maybe your miracle's marinating and your blessing is still baking and you can't rush perfection. God is an artist who respects us. You are a magnificent masterpiece made in the image of the Most High. With the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Now that's magic. Today I got to sit down with the creative and entrepreneur Chris the Journey James. We chopped it on a wide range of topics, including his creative process, his favorite works, his influences, and even a little self-care talk. Since the discussion took place amidst the protests after the murder of George Floyd, we spoke on that as well. All in all, I enjoyed the conversation and hope y'all do too. It's the glow. Look around and I'm still here. I celebrate. 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 Celebrate what a brother done done. Celebrate what we about to come from. Celebrate all the love the hate walk upon their face, but they ain't about no. I celebrate. I've always, you know, existed in a, in, a, in a colorful way. And it's always just been a passion of mine to, to show my mind in color, you know? So I started writing poetry in the seventh grade, um, you know, freshman year of college, I got to perform, you know, at an open mic. And then that just kind of grew into a lot of different things, you know? Like I started figuring out like, how can I take poetry and do all these other things, you know? I was exposed to Ntozaki Shunge that she turned 21 poems into a stage play. And I'm like, oh shoot, I can do that too. So Chris James went from an open mic poet to a playwright. As a creative, doing so much, and I fit a lot of those boxes, uh, what would you say has been like some of the harder, not just moments, but like hindrances? Like what are some like ongoing problems you, you have to overcome? Uh, man, one of the ongoing problems, problems as an artist that I have to consistently overcome is, um, is getting people to understand the value of art mm. and to understand how significant art and creativity is to any movement, uh, to, you know, rather it's to their business, you know, even with me owning an art gallery, you know, people come in here and they see art on our walls and they say, a thousand dollars for that? You know, and I'm like, yeah, you know. So let me ask that, because you spin off one of that. You said, when this time, moment right now, post-murder of George Floyd, like why is art important now? And also why is your art important now? Yeah, I think uh, art inspires action. An artist, right, may not necessarily speak aloud or go to a protest and, and get on the mic and scream, but an artist can paint a picture, right, of George Floyd and hold it up. I walk down the street with a picture of George Floyd and people are probably gonna stop and say, who is this? Or what's that about? So you inspire action because now you're, insp you're inspiring a conversation. So now through that conversation, you're making people more aware of an injustice, of, of, of something that's happening that they probably didn't know about, right? Like I wear, the, I wear my shirts all the time that say poetry and chill or right said the poet, right? And it begins a conversation, right? So, this, so my shirt serves as, as, as an alleyway or entry point into uh, my art somehow inspiring some type of action. And that action may be inspiring them to want to come to an open mic. But so an artist puts out their art to the world and they inspire action. And that action may very well just be conversation, but that conversation leads to a lot. Because conversation, word of mouth, makes me as an artist, you know, a, a decent amount of money sometimes, you know? Uh, and, and you can attest to that because word of mouth, you know, takes a lot of businesses from, from here to, to skyrocket, you right. know, with the Popeye's chicken sandwich. It was word of mouth, right? Uh, so yeah. Got you, art inspires action. Would you say there's a responsibility for creatives right now to be creating or would someone say, you know, I don't have to create just because to, to support the movement and others are kind of like, this is the time I need to. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's a responsibility for anybody to participate in anything that they're not inspired to participate in, right? Uh, you know, the George Floyd thing happened and I didn't necessarily go write a poem about it. I didn't necessarily um, make a social media post. I didn't necessarily, you know, do anything creati creatively. There have been things that, that have happened, you know, that were unjust to black people in America and I just took the time to, to feel I took the time to, you know, for self-care, 
You know, um, I didn't force myself to try to be trendy and hurry up and go write a poem about, you know, the latest, you know, death or the latest, you know, murder, you know, that happened. Uh, and I think some artists do do that, and I don't think that's uh, the healthiest practice. Uh, so I do my best as an artist, again, to do what I'm moved to do. Now, yeah, I recently wrote a piece, you know, for George, you know, uh, in response to the George Floyd situation, but it was already in me to write it. It was already, because I felt it, you know. Uh, I was telling uh, a friend recently, man, that, you know, it's three days ago, you know, it just hit me, you know, and I cried about what was going on. Like, I got, I was angry, right? You know, so, so for me, I think if an artist is emotionally moved to create, then it becomes a responsibility to put it out to the world because your art is not just for you, it's for somebody else. You know, first is for you, first is for you to get it out, but secondly, when you create it, it's now time to share it with the world because somebody needs to hear or to experience what you just created. More angry today than I was the day before. Heart sore because apparently black lives don't matter to some. So desensitized from all these mass murders that I was beginning to become numb, but today I was reminded to feel not to run from the emotions, no matter how much they resemble fire. I'm enraged lately. I was told that it was dangerous to feel such a way, but it's impossible not to when George Floyd looks so much like me. My neck could have very well been the NFL field that that man used his knee to kneel on. I'm not okay today. Last night it rained and I stood in it. After a minute, I couldn't decipher the rain from the tears on my face. They were both cold like the skin on a black body, rigor mortis on a hard ground, crying for a mother who couldn't hear the cries in time. There's no amount of justice for the crime committed, no amount of tears that can be given for the sinner. After 10 protests in seven days, I'm oddly hopeful for a brighter tomorrow. Doubt has a way of lingering like the stench of perpetuated violence, sitting in the corner silent, but bothering everybody. I'm bothered like everybody, and if you aren't, you are absolutely a part of the problem. You had to take time to, to process and feel everything yourself. Yeah. As a creative, also as just a, a black man in America, what aspects of self-care do you do for yourself? Uh, for me, I turn off the world, you know, when it's time to heal. Or I disconnect, like, with the George Floyd situation. Every time I got on social media, I saw a video, right? Uh, every time I got, you know, every time I checked my inbox, a new follower of mine was sending me, you know, a, a different angle or a new update, you know. And, and, and when we continue to look at stuff like that, it becomes traumatizing. And then we become desensitized to it because we, we done saw it so much, right? So what I do for me when I'm, when I'm in that space of healing, I just cut all that off. Unplug. I, don't, I, I unplug. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't necessarily want to have a conversation about it. Like, there's been a lot of folks calling me over the last couple of weeks, uh, wanting me to speak at a protest or a rally, wanting me to, uh, wanting to get my opinion about certain things as it relates to what's going on. And I'm like, I'm not in that space. I need to just be to myself. I need to be in silence because I'm on edge right now. Yeah. You know. And if I respond to certain things or put myself in, a, in certain spaces. The way I respond is not gonna be as logical as I would like it to be. It's gonna be very emotional, and I'm gonna be seen as an angry black man. And that's not how I want the world to see me. Now, I found myself in a similar space where I, I had to remind myself, like, I don't owe anybody anything right now, mm -hmm. right? And, and when I feel I do owe somebody something, I will then act. But at this moment, I just owe it to myself to find my peace and find my center of the wild, you know? Yeah. Uh, like I found myself needing to take a second or three to uh, find my center again. It took maybe four or five days before I felt like myself again. Speaking on how you create for yourself, but you also create for the crowd. Like when, from your creations, what do you hope they get from it when you create? I simply want people to feel, right? Like if, if one person in the audience feel something, you know, from my art, good. You know, rather it offends you. Like, I actually like when my art offends people. Like, you know, that's good, because then they, they begin to think, you know, why am I offended? Uh, hopefully they think that, you know. Like, I wrote a stage play called Dear Black People, and it's some very offensive, 
information and, and you know, certain people will become offended because of some of the language, right? And that's good. I want people to cry when they, when they experience my art. I want them to laugh, right? But I want them to leave that auditorium or that, or that coffee shop feeling somewhat different than they did when they came in. Just like church. When you come to church, you don't put a lead the way you came in. Right, right, I want my art to be like church. You know, I call myself the journey because I want people to feel like they have experienced a, a, a road trip of emotions, right? right? Um, after they've experienced my art. Right. Realize that your voice is significant, right? As it relates to this movement, as it relates to you know the next thing that's going to happen, you know in the world, realize that what you have to say, what you have to share, uh, what it is that you want to do, is significant, uh, is is of value, and what you feel is valid, right? And it's important that you put that out to the world, the way that you feel it should be put out to the world, and don't let anybody or anyone uh, stifle that that creativity that desire to execute on that idea, just do it. Go, oh, man. Appreciate your time, man. Yeah. As we doing Road of Love now? For sure, man. That, that was a socially distant yeah, hug. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is? Hey, Amen. I'm good. Y'all want, sure. want a hug? Uh, nah, maybe in two years. All right. All right. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. You, you, you got a lot to smile for you. You got a lot to live for you. Man, that's a positive brother right there. Although I'm anti-Rona hugs, I am down for his progressive mindset. Art inspires action is his code, and by a sizable community impact, you can tell he lives by it. Once you know, Chris James got the glow. About no, I celebrate. Thank y'all for checking out this episode of The Glow. And while y'all here, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out some more content from Arkansas PBS. See you next Tuesday, 10 a.m. for the next episode.